Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Kamon. One thing that I've noticed over the many years that I've spent consuming an unhealthy amount of media is that main characters are kind of important. I know that can come as a shock to some of you, but it's honestly true. Main characters are a huge driving force to the plot of any story, whether it's a book, a game, or a movie. A bad main character, 9 times out of 10, leads to a bad story. When it comes to most anime, I often find myself enjoying the hell out of main characters, mostly because they're written in ways that make them relatable to almost anyone watching, while also having traces of their own personality that makes them stand out among other characters. So what do you get when you mix one part great writing, two parts finger lasers, and about 112 episodes worth of top tier trash talking? You get the character that perfected the art of being the main character, Yusuke Yurameshi. Yusuke succeeds where a lot of other characters fail. As a character, Yusuke is introduced to the audience perfectly, showing off every bit of detail that his character has to offer and laying out all the cards on the table. He's funny, he's rude, he's cool, and he's kind, and you learn all of this from episode one. And these characteristics remain throughout the whole series. Yusuke isn't a complex character, which works in favor of both him and the story. What you see is what you get with him, but he still has other facets to his character that are slowly revealed across the course of the series. He shows that even if he acts like a good-for-nothing punk, he can still show kindness to those he thinks deserves it. One minute he will be shit-talking a friend to their face, and the next he will fight to save their life. Whether it's an old woman, a demon, or king of the spirit realm, Yusuke's hands are rated E for everyone. Before we get too deep into the analysis, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have a special announcement in the works once we hit 2,000 subs. While you're down there, leave a comment about what kind of content you would like to see from my channel. A lot of Yusuke's personality, goals, and characteristics are laid out for the audience to see within the first episode. Our journey with Yusuke begins with him speedrunning in the first episode death percent category, dying in a car crash saving a little kid. You get a small glimpse into the life he led as he recounts the day leading up to his death. Pretty much every characteristic of Yusuke is laid out flat by Bulma, I mean Botan, when she meets up with Japanese Danny Phantom. He's impulsive, ill-mannered, with a violent temper. He has no respect for any form of authority and is a terrible student. However, what Botan doesn't list off is some of the more not-so-subtle details about Yusuke. He has a terrible home life trouble socializing, and is mistreated by pretty much everyone he knows. Yusuke is a deeply misunderstood person, and has never really been given a fair chance. He knows that everyone sees him as a menace, but he is still willing to do what's right at the cost of his own life. Now as wild as it is to attend one's own funeral, Yusuke going to his shows one last detail about his character. No matter from how high people look down on the 14-year-old street punk, there will still be people that loved him. At first he just assumed that everyone would be better off without him, but after seeing the various levels of meltdowns over his death, they are what influenced him to want to come back to life. Between Keiko sobbing and best boy Kuwabara getting ready to shadow box a picture frame, Yusuke is finally given the chance he has always deserved. This is honestly a perfect way to introduce multiple important characters immediately and have them all show bits of their personalities, rather than focusing on setting up the plot too much. Out of the episode's 20 minute runtime, the only points in the episode that are used to set up the plot is Yusuke being dead and his talk about being brought back to life with Botan. The rest of episode 1 is spent on humanizing our protagonist. One last bit of setup I think is neat isn't found in the actual episode, but in the opening lyrics instead. The Yu Yu Hakusho opening Smile Bomb is interesting when viewed from the perspective of Yusuke as a person. Some of the lines in the song can be interpreted differently based on how far you want to reach for it, but this is how I understood the song, as if it were by slash talking about Yusuke. The first verse talks about the loneliness and isolation Yusuke feels. In the first episode, we can tell that he doesn't really feel like he belongs anywhere. 
He doesn't like going to school, and the days that he even bothers showing up, he just gets kicked out. Staying home isn't any better, so he just wanders around town, wishing someone would reach out to him, like we see with Keiko and Mr. Takanaka, trying to steer him in the right direction. This line is a bit more awkward, but I think it can be connected to Yusuke's wanting to try again at the whole living thing, as well as being spirit detective. This one is more of a stretch though, so I'm not placing too much stake into this one. This one is clearly about Yusuke obtaining his spirit powers, mostly thanks to the opportunity given to him by Botan and Koenma. However, this can also apply to pretty much the entire series, where Yusuke is able to constantly grow in strength, and as a person thanks to all the people he meets along his journey, be they friend or foe. Though most of the time it's foe. This last one is a bit more literal in that Yusuke finds himself able to finally see the world for what it is, not only from growing as a person, but in his intellect too. No longer viewing himself as a slacker, but learning that not only is he capable of compassion, but so are others around him after spending his whole life being looked down on. I'm not going to do the full version of the opening, so I'll leave the rest for you to make your own interpretations. So now that we understand Yusuke as he was introduced, let's break down how he grows as a person throughout the story. This is probably the best spot to put a spoiler warning for pretty much all of Yu Yu Hakusho, so this is your chance to duck out if you care about things like that. I won't spend too much time on every interaction Yusuke has with every character, so I'll just highlight the points that are important to his character growth. Yusuke during Spirit Detective Saga is a very unique protagonist. He takes the delinquent trope and makes it his own, turning him from a street punk into a ghost hunting street punk. Our story starts with Yusuke getting JV4 stalked by a car, and this opens up a new perspective to him. Now that he is dead, he has a unique opportunity to view the lives of those that were close to him now that he isn't around. Going through the trial set by Koenma, Yusuke's good-hearted nature is shown in full force. At first it's played off as him just doing good deeds to be brought back to life, but the time he spends watching over Keiko and Kuwabara says otherwise. He spends a week not only protecting Kuwabara, but also bonding with him on some emotional level as he tries to help him through his own trials. As for Keiko, Yusuke has given many opportunities to show how he really feels about her, but actions speak louder than words when he willingly tosses his spirit eggs into the flames to save her life, and sacrificing his first second chance. Because of this selfless act, Yusuke passes his trial, and through the help of Keiko, is now back in the world of the living. Having spent some time dead, Yusuke now has a unique outlook on life. A mix of happy to be alive again, and also coping with the finality of death for those that aren't like him. Beginning his work as spirit detective, he learns a lot about the afterlife and spirit world, but also the fact that demons exist. Not only are demons real, but they also can take over human bodies and snatch souls, leading to his first major case as spirit detective. Yusuke meeting Hiei and Kurama lead to some interesting character moments. His fight with the first big demon that joined forces with Kurama and Hiei showed a peek at Yusuke's clever fighting tactics with his new spirit gun abilities, and this is further explored with Hiei clearly outmatching him with the Jigan. This fight does lead to the interesting narrative point of how can Yusuke defeat someone who is not only clearly stronger, but when he also only has one chance to do so. This is resolved not by Yusuke playing 4D chess, but by being a lucky idiot. Doing something so dumb that it just might work is apparently an effective strategy. The real character moment of this section is however when he meets up with Karama. After hearing how Karama was willing to sacrifice himself to save his mother's life, 
Yusuke steps in to offer his own instead, stating that he knows what it's like to watch a mother mourn over their dead son, and he wasn't going to allow that to happen again if he was able to stop it. The last few bits of Yusuke's character comes together during the Genkai section and the Saint Beast arc. When entering Genkai's tournament, we get a more accurate reading on Yusuke's skills, showing that he is stronger than Kuwabara, but less spiritually aware than he is. His intelligence in battle is also further explored during the tournament, but also still makes it clear that he should be playing the lottery with how lucky he can get. The Saint Beast arc acts as a great way to showcase the skills and personalities of the newly formed Team Yurameshi, Yusuke stepping into the leader role for the first time while also showing the depths of his determination to get the job done and trust his friends. The last bit of the Spear Detective Saga contains the Rescue Yukina arc, which has one of the contenders of the best lines in anime history. I don't know anything about that, okay? Guys just don't fight girls! I'll fight with you! <laughs> You're messy, are you serious? She's a fighter and she's trying to get in our way. I don't care if she's a girl or a baby or somebody's grandmother. I'll still knock her out. This bit of the story is more Kuwabara focused, but it does show how well the two get along and work together. One bit of Yusuke's character that I haven't talked about yet is one that was forced out of him, and that is true fear. For the first time in his life, Yusuke is afraid to lose a fight, and the man that brought that out of him was Togoro. Yusuke combines everything he has learned about being a spirit detective, spirit energy, and teaming up with Kuwabara to take down Togoro, capping off the first chapter of the very long journey he has ahead. When I first decided to do an analysis on Yusuke, I had the idea to summarize his entire character arc across the whole story, but I figured it would be best to only do the first major chunk of it. My two main reasons for this decision is that it would make the video not take 5 months to make again, but also leaves room for those who might have not seen all of Yu Yu Hakusho, or for those who haven't seen it in general and are interested in watching it. Leading into the rest of the series, however, the Dark Tournament has some amazing moments for every character on top of being one of the best tournament arcs in general. Chapter Black showcases the darker aspects of Yusuke's line of work as well as him stepping up as a leader, and the Three Kings arc is a comfy ending to the story and rounds off Yusuke's character as a whole. Now that we have gone through all of this, I find myself asking, why does it work? Yusuke works as a protagonist better than others because he feels like an actual person. We spend ample amounts of time with him not only in casual situations, but we know how he thinks in stressful situations, but also what he thinks about his friends. We are never left guessing what's going to happen next because Yusuke's character has a level of consistency across the story that doesn't treat the audience like an idiot. The main problem that I have with a lot of newer main characters is a lot of the time spent with them is used to establish the story. This isn't a bad thing, but leaves me feeling like the protagonist is either boring or they feel like a plot device. They only exist to drive the story forward. Yusuke is a very proactive character in that he gets things done by his own will and isn't railroaded along by the events of the story. There are many things out of his control like the whole dying thing or being forced into the dark tournament that move the story along, but Yusuke's decisions as a character are what make up those arcs as a whole. My final thoughts on Yusuke is that as a character, he's perfect. Not in that there is absolutely nothing wrong with him, but in that there are several things wrong with him. He's an impulsive, dim-witted, arrogant smartass, but all of those things are what makes him feel real. I hope in the future we get many more anime and manga filled with characters like the number one spirit detective of Earth, Yusuke Yurameshi. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. This is my second time doing a character analysis, so I'm not exactly used to it yet. Leave some feedback down below and hit subscribe if you haven't. I still have a fun surprise plan once we hit 2,000 subs. Make sure to follow me on Twitter to stay updated on video progress as well. I also post polls there and in the YouTube community tab on what my next video should be. With that out of the way, I've been Kmon, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Later!
He's a phantom.